the first thing that that's bothersome about this situation is and, and answer this answer this honestly folks when everybody was jumping all over Patrick Reed for everything right and there are many many people again I'll call this kind of the social media world where you're tried and convicted there are many people that are convinced that anything that Patrick Reed did in those litany of things that he went through but of his own making or otherwise, I'm not making a judgment. I'm just saying there are people that are convinced that he cheated and they won't be convinced otherwise he cheated. That's it. Okay. So let me ask you this question. Here's a question. If what you saw was done by Patrick Reed, would you have declared it as cheating? And the reason I'm asking you that question that way is does it matter who does it because do you remember when John Rahm was assessed to penalty for doing what essentially was the exact same thing however with far less severity I wonder how many people remember that so now you now now comes in an objective measurement to a certain extent. It was on the PGA Tour. But there was an objective measurement made. A rules official said, no, that's a violation of the rules. So to me, there's a couple things going on here. And that's what's reflected in the, the question of the day. Is breaking a rule in golf the same as cheating? No. They are two distinct things. One has intent. So I saw two things with, it, with this, with Wyndham Clark, that were troubling. It still are troubling. One is, to me, it's 100% certain that his ball moved. It's clear. That's one. Two is, was there an effort made deliberately to improve his lie? Did he use that club to pat down the grass behind the ball so we'd have clearer or better access to the back of the ball? Right? Now, what I would say there is if there was not intent in what he was doing, then there definitely is a systemic issue that we're talking about here. Meaning that, and it's not just him, incidentally, meaning that players are engaged in such a behavior often that they don't even view it as something that is something that shouldn't be done, a violation of the rules. Knowingly intending to move the grass away from the back of their ball to give them better access. I've heard from a lot of people are saying, oh, it was a bad, very bad look, et cetera, et cetera. It was bad. It was bad all around. And Wyndham Clark's a good dude. He's a good guy. And in these situations, as you know, I always give the players the benefit of the doubt. But when it comes to that ball moving, I don't think there's any doubt. The ball moved. Was there some effort being made to, to protect a player or protect a field, or is it harder to get called for penalty? That was the thing that, that Brando Chambly went off on. He said, nowadays, what, what do you got to do to get a penalty? The same kind of criticism you hear, for example, on the NBA. What do you got to do to get a penalty? What is traveling nowadays? Right? So that was, it. That was the part that Brando went off on. The second part is the much more delicate one, the much more concerning one, which is deliberately improving your lie. So, yeah, those are the two areas that I had a big, big issue with everything that took place. What are you hearing, Dom, from people today? I know we don't get to it very much when we're on Golf Channel because of our time constraints now, but today we don't have the time constraint. What are you hearing? Yeah, I mean, it's it. Uh, now that we're on Golf Channel, which is incredible, and we appreciate all the support everyone has has given us, it's been it's been awesome. But yes, we only have 
in producer speak, content time, right? We only have like 40 something minutes of content time. It's already 840 if you're watching us live on YouTube right now. So we're 40 minutes into the show. And this would have been the end of the show, point, normally. One, yeah, we've, to this point, we've only we'd taken be done. one break. We haven't played any sound from, from Scotty Schefter Don't or Abraham Answer or anybody that's won uh, anything. Now he's becoming we've a producer. Anything. He's becoming a round I'm glass just saying, we're, we, uh, we, producer that's complaining. We haven't had time to do anything. So it's very difficult for me to cram everything into the show and the time constraints. Hey, so you know every what, now and again, we're still going to have shows like this where we don't have time constraints. Dom, anything that we don't get to, we will post on the on the YouTube channel. Does that make you any true. happier? That is true. All right. No. All right. Uh, it does not. I'm gonna read. I'm just gonna read some stuff coming in. This is all focused for the most part on Wyndham Clark's situation. The crazy thing is, he did it twice on the same shot with two different clubs. In the video, it clearly changed position. The ball can move so long as it doesn't change position. He was bending the grass. You can't do that. The circle is not in the same location. Compare the, Andrew, put that picture back up. Uh, compare the blades of grass locations on the circle. I don't think he was, David writes, I don't think he was trying to improve his lie. <laughs> he was matting down the grass, and the rules official at NBC had blamed the matting of the grass due to the weight of the club. Wyndham was pressing down the, on the grass. It was obvious. If it was Patrick Reed, he definitely would have been penalized. He was bouncing his club up and down. That is not the natural weight of the club. You cannot improve a lie. Nope. We all know that. He was applying downward pressure with his club. That, 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 this is kind of universally their, their feeling what, what I would describe as what you're feeling, Matt, which is an uneasiness. It didn't, it didn't seem quite right. The question of the day, again, is there a difference between cheating and breaking a rule? Yes or no? 83 See, I don't think it's quite right. Not yes. quite. It, it, it wasn't one of these situations that wasn't quite right. It was flat out wrong. I don't think there's a gray area with this. Well, there's two issues I have with that comment. The first is if it was, if it was flat out wrong, then there should have been a, a, a penalty. It should have been something. Nothing happened. That's... That's weird if, if that's where you're standing. The second thing is, which is the problem that I have, that no one seems to be talking about. The way the USGA has altered the rules with regard to HD television is essentially paraphrasing whatever rule dash, dash, dash it is, is that if you can't see it with the naked eye, it didn't happen. Seems fair to me, right? If the ball moves two millimeters that we see in HD close-up, that doesn't really count as moving two millimeters because nobody can see that. I agree with that. I think that's fair. The ball moving or not moving in this situation with Wyndham Clark does not bother me very much. I think it moved minimally, and I think you could argue that it wasn't really something you would be able to see with the naked eye. I do not have an issue with the, with the penalty not being assessed for the ball moving. What drives me nuts is the fact that the improving of the lie is not something that anyone really focused on. It, when, they were, when they were rehashing it on Golf Central, Brando Chambly and the team, they didn't really focus too much on it. On the broadcast, they also didn't really focus too much on it at all. I barely mentioned it. To me, that was the weird part, was the matting down of the lie. Now, again, Dom, we cannot show you footage. We're not allowed to show footage of coverage. But we don't he the literally had it, Andrew but... put me back on the thing. So we had... So you have the grass, right? The grass is up like this. He had his club. He wasn't he wasn't going like this. He was going and he did it like four or five times and smashed it down. So to me it was really obviously him improving his lie. Now the other thing that no one is mentioning, Matt, is the last thing I'll say and then you can comment. These days, it's very rare at a PGA tour level for a player to hack out right, to hack out sideways of the rough. That is rare. That yeah. happens essentially at U.S. Opens, and that's yeah. it, right? So he took out the highest lofted wedge he had and matted it down, and then he switched to a, a much a much better, bigger iron. I don't know what it was, a seven iron, whatever, and he hacked it down on, you know, the, you know, the, the water goes around the edge there yeah. on 18, and he hacked it down just short of the green, so he had a pitch shot, right? 
So he was always going to hack it down there as far as he could. He was never going to hit sideways 10 yards. So to me, the argument that, well, he's, you know, he was testing. Well, he wanted to see if he wanted to hit his sandwich sideways 10 yards. Come on. Nobody was going to do that. He was never going to do that. No, but he had and another so choice. The issue going to me is he took he out that club just to mat the lie, right? Or no? Well, he was 142 away. He, he could have, it's probably for him, would have been like a 50-degree wedge or a gap wedge, uh, if you please, is probably that distance if he could get at it. But to, to your point, uh, and I found the quote from, from Chambly talking about the penalties. He said, no longer is it a penalty to tap down spike markers. You can ground a club in the penalty area. You can inadvertently touch the sand. Your ball could move when you address it. It's almost impossible to get a penalty these days. But when a rule violation, at least to me, is as obvious as this, and I don't need video to see it, you would think that a penalty would be assessed, close quote. So to your point, and as I've been illustrating here, there are two different and distinct and separate issues at play. One is, and I mentioned to you that John Rahm got a penalty for the same thing. Far less severe, incidentally, but got this penalty for the same thing. And they interviewed afterwards and said, were you aware of that? He wasn't aware of it. He, said, he didn't even know it moved. But he said, if, if, they, if they view it, that a penalty occurred, and I was responsible for moving that ball, I get it, assessed a penalty. Okay? So that comes down to breaking a rule of golf. Is it possible to break a rule of golf and you didn't know it? Of course it's possible. Either because you didn't know the rule either because it was a rule that was dependent upon circumstance or because you didn't see it. Whatever those reasons are, you could break a rule of golf and be assessed a penalty and you broke a rule. Different than when you do something with intent. And that's the part, Dom, that everybody is staying away from because that's the ugly part. That's the reason why. Let, All let I'm telling you, you is... Can, yep. ha, in the history of, because you're you're more of a historian than anyone I've ever met, and I don't know the answer to this question. In the history of the PGA Tour, has there, or even professional golf, do you can you think of anyone on record admitting to knowingly cheating, saying, "Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, you're, you well, caught I, me, I did it." Let me let me go back to let me go back to this circumstance because it applies directly to what we're talking about relative to a ball in the rough. Uh, it was at the 1925 U.S. Open at the Worcester Country Club, the 11th hole. Bobby Jones hit his drive into the left rough. He happened to be playing that day alongside of his arch rival, Walter Hagen. Jones went up to address the ball in the thick rough. It was rye. It's a Kentucky bluegrass rye mix. He went up to address his ball, and as he put it down, he pulled the club away and he said the ball moved. He said the ball moved. Rules official came over. The rules official begged Bobby Jones not to assess the penalty. They interviewed Walter Hagen and said, did you see it move? Walter was like, no, nah, I didn't see it move. Bobby, you're fine. They interviewed people in the gallery. Nobody saw it move. No one, everyone said it didn't happen. Bobby Jones said it happened. Penalty was assessed because he called himself on it. He ended up going into a playoff against Willie McFarlane. If memory serves me, I believe it was Willie McFarlane, kind of this veteran campaigner pro, you know, back in the day. I think Willie was from Scotland, if memory serves me. And went into a playoff against Willie, and he lost. That one stroke mattered a lot. So, yes, there is precedence. That was when afterwards he was he was asked by the media why he did what he did. And, and you know, everyone was, was giving him accolades, et cetera. And he said, you might as well praise a man for not robbing a bank. It's part of why Bobby Jones is... And I'm calling him Bobby Jones because that's a popular name. He preferred Bob, but that's part of why he's the legend that he is. So, yes, there is there is multiple instant instances of precedence in the game of golf. That's just one of them is the most famous. Uh, anything else, Dom, coming in from the people you want to share before we go to a break here? 
I mean, we can do this all day. I don't. I, mean, I know. I know. <laughs> there's a lot of comments coming. In. There are some people saying, which I uh, where was a. Uh, David says, you guys are making Clark a devious cheat. I don't think so. I, I'm not sure that I, – I don't think that's fair. I'm not I, – I didn't – did I say that? I didn't say that. No. What we're saying is, is that there is a pattern of behavior, and if that pattern of behavior is not called out as violating the rules, that's why I called it a systemic incident, he is not the only one doing this. There are lots of players that do that same thing. In my mind, it is an absolute breaking of the rule. In my mind, it is absolutely intended to improve the lie and access to the back of the golf ball with the club. Right? If players so saying, think... So your opinion is it needs to be policed heavier. Yeah, and it needs to be very, very clear. You cannot do this. So to to the points and the quotes that I'm reading from from Chambly, quoting again, it's almost impossible to get a penalty these days. Dot dot dot. Close quote. Well, like to what you were saying about uh, you know stories from back in the day, right? It's hard today with the cameras, and it's also complicated because the cameras don't follow everybody especially down the stretch of a big event when the cameras are focused on the last uh, three groups, whatever it is. And you're, okay. you're showing an insane amount of close-ups of their wedge shots, of their shots out of the rough, et cetera, et cetera. And the other, the other side of this, right, I think it's complex, is it's, it's different if you're playing with your buddies than you are playing in a tournament. I think it's rare for an individual to be comfortable screaming across the fairway that someone's cheating. That that's an uncomfortable thing for for a, a competitor sometimes to do. Isn't doesn't that mean it's more on the officials than it is oh, yeah. on the playing partners? Oh yeah. Because well, it's on the player if, if and it's on the if officials. If you're on the opposite yeah. side of the fairway and you're like, "Yeah, you're fluffing your lie over there. You're 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 cheating." No, it's unlikely someone's going to bark that out in a tournament conditions. That's got to come from, see the, it. from mean, the officials. Right. Yeah. hundred percent. I mean, this, it, the, you know, the whole thing about people that are high up on the leaderboard or on television more. So they face, they face more scrutiny. And is that fair compared to the rest of the field? That's the heat of beating in the kitchen. You're that good that your, that your shots are being televised and close-ups are being made of what you're doing, et cetera, et cetera. If you're that good, then you better make sure that everything you're doing is to the letter of the law because that's part of what goes along with it. You get more TV time because people presumably want to see what you're doing. I don't have any issue with that. There's no victimization that take, takes place there. If there's an issue with that, if you seriously have an issue with that and going, well, it's unfair that you watch me so closely, um, Aren't we talking about something different here then? 